Mheshimiwa Huru Migai Kenyatta na brother Raila Amolo Odinga na Lida Wazimio viongozi wenzangu waombolezaji members of the clergy we really do not have enough words with which to thank you for finding the time and braving the challenge that uh, made it difficult for us to hold this occasion at the Catholic grounds at Depaul. And we had to make adjustments at night to be here. A chance to be able to say coherent to our fellow citizens who fell because of the administration of their bodies of police bullets. The majority of them fell because of the violence committed against them by the police. Therefore, I will read this statement and after which I will also be asked by my brother there to launch uh, the Victims Fund. Uh, and I hope that Kenyans will be able to support this very worthy cause. The theme is actually amazing. Kenyans, renew your strength. And Bishop, thank you so much. Uh, a friend of mine called Bishop Klein called me only this week because he had led a demonstration in the BVI, the British Virgin Islands, and was on his way to Kisumu. And uh, um, he used those words that David used to his brother and his brothers. Is there not a cause? It's amazing. Is there not a cause while we are here? Uh, we know that uh, we are told that the Court of Appeal has lifted the orders suspending implementation of the infamous Finance Act. And they say pending determination of the main suit. What that means is Kenyans are now going to be even more heavily taxed. Is there not a cause? So, statement by Zumiya Laumoja, one Kenya at the interdenominational record mass, July the 28th. 2023. Dear Kenyans, Isaiah 4031 says, and I want to quote, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Kenyans, we are here to renew our strength, even as we say Kwaheri to these wonderful Kenyans who are not here with us. Yes, fellow Kenyans, after the beatings and murders of these past days, past days, we have to renew our strength. We must mount up with wings because we do wait upon the Lord. We are here to stand with the families of those we've lost and to stand with all who call them friends. We have come as ordinary Kenyans to kneel and pray to a God whose promise of justice has been proven to stand over ages. The people we lost in these protests did not have to die. Those who are hurt did not have to suffer that fate all that they were asking for was for the Kenya Kwanzaa regime to drop the harsh taxes and lower the cost of basic commodities. The people we have lost and those national injuries have no capacity to overthrow a government. They have no capacity to own guns. Indeed, they have none. They lack the very basic of the basics. Bunga, sugar, milk, school fees, bus fare, and rent, and a lot more. 
That's all they had. They were asking for. Like law abiding citizens who also had faith in our constitution, they gathered to exercise their right to peaceful assembly and free speech. They hoped that someone sitting in the presidency, the National Treasury, the Kenya Revenue Authority and Parliament would know, would take note of and act on their grievances. They ended up taking bullets. Nothing we say here today can fill the hole left in the hearts of families that lost their loved ones. We mourn with those families. We promise to help. And we promise to pursue justice wherever. We pray that those nursing injuries and pain in hospitals and homes across Kenya will pull through. They have to pull through for the sake of our country. We have been to hospitals and I can report that many of the victims are courageous in their fights to recover. They are courageous to come out and continue the fight. They are in our thoughts and in our prayers. They know these prayers are going on right now and they should feel encouraged. They know we have lit candles here today and laid flowers in their honor and they know we love them. We will stand with them and we will pursue justice for them. We are deeply grateful for those who saved lives and those who continue to save lives. We are grateful for the doctors and nurses and first responders who walked around the clock to save lives. We are grateful for those police officers who although armed to the teeth and with express orders to shoot and kill, still restrained themselves and saved lives. They may not have been the majority, but they were there. In the end, we are in the same struggle, the struggle to enable all of us, the police, the ordinary citizens, the politicians, I like to call them political leaders, the civil servants, live decent and dignified lives. As we strive to make sense out of the senseless tragedy that has engulfed our nation these past days, we need to ask ourselves some basic questions as a nation. One of the questions we have to ask is, and my brother uh, Eugene Ramalas referred to this, is Article 37 of our Constitution mere words of no value or relevance and offers no protection to citizens? Has Kenya Kwanzaa indeed suspended the Constitution? Because I, I want to post, I want to suggest, if you suspend any part of Constitution 2010, any article, you effectively have suspended the whole document. As we and do we, what do we need to do to ensure the provisions of the Constitution provide the protection they were meant, meant for as citizens? At this time of polarization like we are in today, it is easy for a section of the country to see these events as things that only happen to the other side. The people we don't like, the people we call our enemies. That should not be the case, fellow Kenyans. At a time like this, we need to dig deep into our reservoir of sobriety and take a very close look and dispassionate look at our nation. Something is brewing and getting rotten in the heart of our country. It is possible for a nation to label and turn against its patriots it is happening in our country. We need to listen to each other more carefully. We need to tap into our wells of empathy 
We need to soften our hearts. Yes, indeed, Dr. Caroline Karugu, we hear you. We need to unclench our fists. Yes, we need to listen to fellow citizens, all of us. The events of these past days need to make us to reflect on the present and the future, on the way we want to run this country and the way we want to be governed, not to be ruled. We heard that today. We need to accept a simple fact of life, that we are all mortal, that what matters is not wealth or status or power or fame, but life and what we do with it when we have it. We need to reflect on our values, yes, chapter 10 of our constitution, national values as a nation, and ask ourselves whether our actions reflect our values. If we accept that those who were harmed or killed are part of our Kenyan family, then we have to face the pain that we are a smaller today as a family because we took away lives when we did not have to. As we speak here, we have orphans, widows and widowers, when we did not have to. We have to reflect and debate as a nation in a way that recognizes that every life matters and is God-given. And in a way that honors the dead and the wounded. The lives we celebrate today must force this country to pursue more civility in our public engagements. We need to honestly debate whether it is uh, courage or cowardice when the state unleashes artillery and brute force against an armed citizens asking for the most basic of basics, food. With superiors, yes indeed, on their heads. These are people who were testing the limits of our democracy who had faith in our constitution, who had faith in their obligations as citizens, and who hoped that one day they, they too, might be leaders, police officers, even presidents in this country. Now, they are gone. Let these deaths and injuries inspire us to do everything we can to make sure that this country lives up to the expectations of our citizens. Today, even as we continue to mourn, celebrate and pray for the victims, we are going a step further and we're launching the Citizens Emergency Fund to offer practical support to families of the dead and the injured. We appeal to all Kenyans of goodwill, those who love justice, those who wait upon the law to come through for their fellow citizens by contributing to this fund. And I want at this juncture to acknowledge with grateful thanks the contribution of our brother, President Huru Muigai Kenyatta, of one million shillings. I also want to acknowledge the contribution of our brother, Raila Molo Odinga, of one million children. And I'm escorting them with a half a million children. Our ah, wonderful members of parliament have already given 1.5 million children. We further take this opportunity to thank all our citizens who continue to append their signatures to signal a withdrawal of support for the Kenya Kwanzaa regime. As we speak, the signatures as of today stand at 8.2 million, and we are still counting. Please continue signing. You should be very bold, courageous, bold and courageous. Be of good courage and stand very strong. Those are the words that Moses gave, I think, uh, to, to Joshua. Be strong and of good courage.
Thank you. Mother's apology, she's out of the country still. I'm sure as soon as she lands, she'll be able to do the need for. And our brother Eugene has also pledged 200,000 shillings. We'll both get more pledges. Let's feel relaxed about this. I also want to announce on our behalf that on Sunday the 30th of July, that is day after tomorrow, we shall communicate to the nation our next course of action with regard to anti-tax protests. May God bless and keep those who have lost an eternal peace, young as they were. We pray to God to love, heal, and watch over the survivors and their families. May we, and may the good Lord enable us to renew our strength as a people. May God bless Kenya. We are putting that on the screen. Uh, pay bill number 247247 and account number 1630284407076 is there on the screen and please notice a lot of these families are struggling we saw the, the family in Nakuru unable to do anything even to bury their loved ones I'll give you an example of this young man was shot in a Mali. Uh, he wasn't even demonstrating. Bullet just hit him, was standing next to his mother, a single mother. This young man and the mother and their sister and the sister have been uh, thrown out of their family in a place called Kilala near Makueni. And this young boy had sworn to the mother, Mom, I'll go study as much as I can and come and build a house for you. This young man was, was supposed to join Moy University in September to a chance study and come and build a house for the mother. It did not happen. Well, this single mother has been asking us is if we can get at least our neighbor because she had not out there where she's buried her son, and then she could be at least coming to pay her respects to her departed son. Just see how emotional these things are. Did he, did this young man have to die? And then people come up congratulating the police? No, no, we cannot take it. We cannot leave it here, and we have to do something about this. And, uh, yes. Well, we really must thank the governors of Kisumu, Migori, Homa Bay, Siaya, and Kisi, yeah, for waiving all the hospital bills <laughs> and continuing to support these victims. Amachakos. Oh, Wabini has also sent word that, in fact, when we were there, she had also waived. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, for, for that show of solidarity. Yeah, so this is the way to go. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Your Excellency. We have come to the tail end of our <laughs> engagement today. And because we were in a church service, we want to close with a word of prayer. I will ask Bishop Abuka to lead us in that. As a microphone is given to them, praise him kindly as you sing Amazing Grace. Thank you. Praise him. Please assist uh, Bishop Abuka with uh, a microphone from down there. Asante, Asante. 